Let's start with the topic of functions and their graphs. A function is a relation between a set of inputs and a set of possible outputs where each input is related to exactly one output. The graph of a function is a visual representation of this relationship. Let's consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 4. To graph this function, we first identify key points and the shape of the graph. This function is a quadratic function, which graphs as a parabola. The general form of a quadratic function is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. For the function f of x equals x squared minus 4, the coefficient is 1, so the parabola opens upwards. The vertex of the parabola is at the point 0 comma minus 4, since the vertex form of a quadratic function f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k shows that the vertex h comma k is at 0 comma minus 4. Next, we identify the x-intercepts by setting f of x equal to 0. This gives us x squared minus 4 equals 0, which factors to x minus 2 times x plus 2 equals 0. So, the x-intercepts are at x equals 2 and x equals minus 2. The y-intercept is found by evaluating f of 0, which gives us f of 0 equals 0 squared minus 4, or minus 4. Plotting these points and the general shape of the parabola on a graph, we obtain the graph of the function f of x equals x squared minus 4. Now, let's explore exponential functions. An exponential function is a mathematical function of the form f of x equals a times b to the power of x, where is a constant, b is the base of the exponential, and x is the exponent. Exponential functions are characterized by their rapid growth or decay. Let's consider the function f of x equals 2 times 3 to the power of x. To understand the behavior of this function, we examine its key properties. The base of the exponential function is 3, which means the function grows by a factor of 3 for each unit increase in x. The initial value, when x equals 0, is f of 0 equals 2 times 3 to the power of 0, which is 2. Next, we evaluate the function at several values of x. For x equals 1, f of 1 equals 2 times 3 to the power of 1, which is 6. For x equals 2, f of 2 equals 2 times 3 to the power of 2, which is 18. For x equals minus 1, f of minus 1 equals 2 times 3 to the power of minus 1, which is 2 over 3. These values illustrate the rapid growth of the exponential function as x increases and its decay as x decreases. The graph of f of x equals 2 times 3 to the power of x is an upward sloping curve that becomes steeper as x increases reflecting the exponential growth of the function. Conversely, as x decreases, the function approaches zero but never actually reaches it, showing the exponential decay. Let's continue with logarithmic functions. A logarithmic function is the inverse of an exponential function. It is of the form f of x equals log base b of x, where b is the base of the logarithm. The logarithmic function answers the question, to what exponent must the base b be raised to produce x? Let's consider the function f of x equals log base 2 of x. To understand the behavior of this function, we examine its key properties. The base of the logarithmic function is 2. The domain of the function is for x greater than 0. Next, we evaluate the function at several values of x. For x equals 1, f of 1 equals log base 2 of 1, which is 0, since 2 to the power of 0 is 1. For x equals 2, f of 2 equals log base 2 of 2, which is 1, since 2 to the power of 1 is 2. For x equals 4, f of 4 equals log base 2 of 4, which is 2, 
since 2 to the power of 2 is 4. For x equals 1 over 2, f of 1 over 2 equals log base 2 of 1 over 2, which is minus 1, since 2 to the power of minus 1 is 1 over 2. These values illustrate how the logarithmic function increases slowly as x increases and decreases as x gets closer to 0. The graph of f of x equals log base 2 of x is an upward sloping curve that passes through the point 1 comma 0, reflecting the logarithmic growth. As x approaches 0 from the positive side, the function decreases without bound, showing the logarithmic decay. Let's continue with polynomial functions. A polynomial function is a mathematical expression involving a sum of powers and one or more variables multiplied by coefficients. It is of the form p of x equals a n x to the power of n plus a n minus 1 x to the power of n minus 1 and so on, plus a 1 x plus a 0, where a n, a n minus 1, and so on, are constants. Let's consider the polynomial function p of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 5. To understand the behavior of this function, we examine its key properties. The degree of the polynomial is the highest power of x, which in this case is 3. The leading coefficient is the coefficient of the term with the highest power of x, which is 2. Next, we evaluate the function at several values of x. For x equals 0, p of 0 equals 2 times 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared plus 0 minus 5, which is minus 5. For x equals 1, p of 1 equals 2 times 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared plus 1 minus 5, which is minus 5. For x equals minus 1, p of minus 1 equals 2 times minus 1 cubed minus 3 times minus 1 squared plus minus 1 minus 5, which is minus 11. These values help us understand the function's behavior at specific points. The graph of p of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 5 is a curve that reflects the polynomial's degree and leading coefficient. As x increases or decreases, the function's value grows rapidly in a manner consistent with the cubic term dominating the function's behavior. Let's explore rational functions. A rational function is a function that can be expressed as the quotient of two polynomial functions. It is of the form f of x equals the fraction 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 over x squared minus 4, where p of x and q of x are polynomial functions and q of x is not equal to 0. To understand the behavior of this function, we examine its key properties. The domain of the function f of x is undefined where the denominator x squared minus 4 equals 0, which occurs at x equals 2 and x equals minus 2. Therefore, the domain of f of x is all real numbers except minus 2 and 2. Vertical asymptotes occur where the denominator is 0 but the numerator is not 0. At x equals 2 and x equals minus 2, f of x has vertical asymptotes. Next, we evaluate the function at several values of x. For x equals 0, f of 0 equals the fraction 2 times 0 squared plus 3 times 0 plus 1 over 0 squared minus 4, which is 1 over minus 4, or minus 1 over 4. For x equals 1, f of 1 equals the fraction 2 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 1 over 1 squared minus 4, which is 6 over minus 3, or minus 2. For x equals 3, f of 3 equals the fraction 2 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 1 over 3 squared minus 4, which is 22 over 5. These evaluations illustrate how the function behaves around its vertical asymptotes and within its defined domain. The graph of f of x equals the fraction 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 over x squared minus 4 shows the presence of vertical asymptotes at x equals 2 and x equals minus 2 with the function approaching infinity or negative infinity near these points.
Let's explore trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions are functions of an angle and are used to relate the angles of a triangle to the lengths of its sides. The primary trigonometric functions are sine, cosine, and tangent. Let's consider the sine function, f of x equals sine of x. To understand the behavior of the sine function, we examine its key properties. The sine function is periodic with a period of 2 pi. The range of the sine function is from minus 1 to 1, meaning it oscillates between minus 1 and 1. Next, we evaluate the function at several angles. For x equals 0, f of 0 equals sine of 0, which is 0. For x equals pi over 2, f of pi over 2 equals sine of pi over 2, which is 1. For x equals pi, f of pi equals sine of pi, which is 0. For x equals 3 pi over 2, f of 3 pi over 2 equals sine of 3 pi over 2, which is minus 1. These values illustrate the periodic nature and range of the sine function. The graph of f of x equals sine of x is a wave-like curve that oscillates between minus 1 and 1 over each period of 2 pi.